Hi guys, Namaste, welcome to the channel and today's video is a bittersweet video. It's sweet because this is gonna be my first video using my new camera and I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. I'm gonna let you guys guess in the comments down below. The only hint I'm gonna give you is that this camera has a feature called product showcase, which means if I take something and I put it in front of the camera, it's gonna focus on the product and when I take it out, it's gonna focus back on me. So that's the hint, put in the comment section down below what you think this camera is. If you do guess it right, when I do make a video on this camera, I will put your name in the video giving you a shout out. And the bitter part about this video is is that by the time this video is made and you guys are watching this my good old faithful Canon M50 will have found a new owner so this video is about my Canon M50 and my experience with it so far as I've used it for making content on this YouTube channel for over the past year so without wasting any further time let's sail away All right, so before I start about my Canon M50, I just wanted to give you a brief history of the cameras that I've used. When I first started making YouTube videos on this channel, I actually used the camera on my phone, which at that time was the Note 9, and I liked it for the fact that I had it on me at all times and the accessibility to it. The only thing I didn't like about it was the fact that whenever I was recording and there was a call or there was a message, it either interrupted the video process or it just distracted me from talking in that video. So then I decided that it would be best for me to find a dedicated camera that I would use to record record my vlogs or the content on this channel and I started looking at something again that was light, that was accessible and also that captured good quality content. And I started looking at action cameras. Even though GoPro was the big name at that point, I actually went for the DJI Osmo Action only because of that front facing LCD screen. As a novice YouTuber, it took the attention away from me as far as am I centered, what background is showing up. So having the front facing LCD screen really helped. The only issue that I had with the DJI Osmo Action and that is pretty much something that plagues every action camera is low light performance. I actually took it to a restaurant where I wanted to showcase their biryani buffet which is unique in itself and when I came back with the footage I found out that the footage was blurry, it was very low quality because it was dinner time at that restaurant, there wasn't any natural light, there was low artificial light which you usually find at dinner time in restaurants that cozy, comfortable, warm lighting. Again, not something really great for action cameras and the DJI Osmo Action struggled. So after that, I thought that it would be best for me to invest in a proper camera. I wasn't looking for something really expensive or heavy. I wasn't looking for something that would cost me $1,000 or more. I wanted something that was affordable, that wouldn't break the bank. I wanted something that was light and easy to use. And thus, I ended up getting the Canon M50. Now, this camera, along with the kit lens, I got it renewed on Amazon for about $550, which is a fancy word for refurbished. Amazon likes to call their open box products renewed but I got this for about 550 and this was a really good deal for me. So the Canon M50 comes with the kit lens which is the f 3.5 to 6.3 15 to 45 millimeter lens and this if you look on YouTube or read any reviews is one of the best kit lenses out there and is one of the highly recommended lenses to have in your kit when you're using the Canon M50. The best thing about this lens that it has image stabilization built in the lens which is really great because the Canon M50 does not have image stabilization built in. It has digital image stabilization which basically means that it stabilizes your image from a software perspective but it does not have have any mechanical or hardware that does image stabilization for you. This lens has great zoom and it performs well when there is proper light, especially during natural sunlight. But the maximum aperture on this camera is 3.5 and the aperture, the best way to explain it is the lower the number, the better it is. So 3.5 is kind of average. So this lens does struggle in low lighting. I actually took this camera with me along with the kit lens on my trip to Florida with Emmanuel where we did a three day, three theme park adventure. And the camera for most parts performed well. 
The only times that I noticed a struggle was during low light, even if it meant that you were walking from a really sunny area to a really shady area, the camera with the lens would kind of struggle to adjust the lighting and to keep the focus on you. I remember one particular instance where I was at Starbucks and it was sunny outside and I was in a shady area in Starbucks. I saw that the whole footage was completely dark and it was really off-putting. So then I came back and I decided that I should invest in a lens that performs well in low light and also kind of gives you that bokeh effect, that blurry effect on the back, especially when I'm vlogging because that looks really nice. I really wanted to get the Sigma 16mm f1.8 lens but it was about $400 and that was a little bit beyond my budget so I compromised and settled for this guy. This is the Canon 22mm f2.0 lens and this was about $200 renewed on Amazon. So this was a really good buy when compared to the Sigma 16mm which was probably twice the price of this. Again remember the aperture the f like golf scores the lower it is the better it is so f 2.0 is really really good this lens performs absolutely fantastic in low light but one thing to remember whenever you use lenses with such aperture where that f number is really low that you would need an nd filter to use it during daytime because the lenses sensor lets so much light in when you try to use it when there's say like proper sunlight or outdoors your image would be completely white or filled with light. So the ND filter is basically kind of like sunglasses. So it lets the lens focus on you and not just blow out the entire frame with just light. And as you can see with the lens on, this camera is really, really small. The Canon M50 also has that flip out lens that you can turn around and flip it at yourself. So if you're a vlogger, this is perfect for you. It also comes with a cold shoe mount so you can put an external mic on top of the camera. I've used the Movo MVR X10, but you can put any other mic. It has a mic jack on this side that you can use to plug in your external mic. So at this point, you might be wondering as to why am I deciding to give this camera up and why did I get a new camera? Well, reason number one, I am by no means an amateur photographer, videographer, or am I into filmmaking? I just want to create content either by vlogging with my family or just sitting in front of the camera and reviewing the gear that I use. So for me, I feel this camera is a little bit too much. If you are again, an amateur photographer, videographer, or are into filmmaking or want to venture into filmmaking, then this is a really good beginner's camera. I honestly feel bad to have a camera like this because I don't use it for its full potential. I just have some settings on it by default. And thus when I use it, I just flip it, turn it on and vlog, which again, I don't feel I'm doing it full justice. The second reason for me is I actually want to use the camera with the 22 millimeter lens, but lenses like these, like I mentioned, do not have any image stabilization built in. So whenever I'm vlogging and I have this on my tripod, which is usually the gorilla pod, I'm usually holding the camera in one hand with the gorilla pod i have emmanuel in my other hand and usually some of my footage becomes really shaky and it's hard to use now yes i can use the 15 45 millimeter in those instances but the 22 millimeter really gives you that bokeh effect in the back which i really crave for when i'm vlogging my other option in that case would be to invest in the gimbal but a proper gimbal costs around at least 400 dollars and i've also seen that with the gimbal you have to actually balance it every time you use it and I've also seen there are some limitations as to what accessories you can use and cannot use when you're using this camera on the gimbal. So long story short, I just wanted to use a camera which basically had one lens that kind of did the things that I wanted to do. Vlog, sit in front of the camera, have that blurry effect in the back when I wanted to, and basically be very easy to use. Have image stabilization built in. So whenever I'm traveling with Emmanuel, it's easy to hold the camera in one hand, have him safe and secured, and also not worry about the footage being shaky or the footage being on usable so while i'm excited for this new camera and to use it and make content for this channel i'm also sad to let this guy go because it is because of this guy that i've been able to create the content that i've created so far which if it wasn't for the quality the ease of use and again 
with this camera being old ye faithful, I probably wouldn't have continued my YouTube career. Again, if you are an amateur photographer, videographer, or want to get into filmmaking, and you don't want to spend too much money, break the bank, break your wallet, and you want to look at something that's affordable just to get things started, then I would highly recommend the Canon M50. But that's where I'm going to end this video, guys. I hope you guys are safe. I hope you guys are healthy. And remember, there's always more.